my star seeds, this is Araya. Yorn, a founding member, has been the inspiration for this video, and I am going to be walking you through all the different stages and steps and rituals you can take as a star seed who is going through the ascension process in order to calm down and cool down and relax your system. I am going to be covering a lot of different topics, so get ready to sit down and get your notepad out and get ready to write because you are going to really implement a new lifestyle. So let's start from the beginning. You may or may not realize that your body is made of delicate filaments and delicate wiring, similar to electrical wiring, and we actually hold an electrical current in our system. So when you overload your system with things that are not easy to digest, easy to assimilate, or don't give your body enough oxygen or liquid, as you know, like water, you will dehydrate, you will burn out, and you will burn up. So basically you will run your car into the ground. So the ascension process is no different. You are actually experiencing the same symptoms you would under a high stress environment. Many people don't realize that ascension is an actual thing. So what an ascension is, it just simply means that you are starting to understand and accept that you are more than what you thought you were. You come from other places beyond what you see in front of you and you're starting to recognize and know that you are more than you thought. You are starting to realize that you are a star being, you are full of light and you are full of love. And there is no accident that you are here. However, as you're starting to disconnect, so to speak, to your current environment, you will start to feel a shift. And when I say disconnect, all I mean is that you're no longer going to be operating from the same paradigm you did before, where you thought what you saw in front of you is all there is. You are starting to realize that there is more. You will start to realize that your body may or may not be equipped for the next part of the journey. So that would include your diet, and your rest cycle, and your intake of liquids, and the noise level around you, and the conversations that you are having. So we are going to go step by step through this process. Just like a baby being born, a baby requires certain things to succeed. And in the same way, a star seed who is ascending and remembering their lineage and where they're from, are also going to be experiencing the same dynamic. Let's start at the beginning. What is your liquid intake? Notice how much caffeine, alcohol, dark drinks, juice, green juice, cold pressed juice, sodas, or water and or alcohol that you consume. So pay attention very carefully to that because this is gonna to have to be adjusted. When you adjust to your new frequency, when you adjust to your new vibration, which will be lighter and higher, your body can no longer operate in clearing so much sludge and heavy toxins out of your body. So you are going to have to be very careful in what you are consuming liquid wise. My recommendation, what I do for myself, is I drink a lot of water. I am constantly filling up my water. So. I'm already through this because I drink so much water, I'm gonna have to get more. I basically live and breathe in the water. I have to have water to survive because my personal filaments, my personal electrical conduits, and how I operate my body as a shaman and as a healer and as a teacher, I use all my frequencies, all of my senses, and all of my body in order to communicate. So I'm receiving information that way and I am also releasing information this way. So I have to consume a lot of water to keep my system running cool, especially for females who also have to understand their hormonal cycle and you also have to represent your body properly by consuming the right teas, herbal remedies, and green juices to alkaline and help your body to relax. My strong recommendation is to stop drinking alcohol. If you have been drinking alcohol on a regular basis, definitely slow down and slowly taper off. Do not have any stories associated with it that you need it, have to rely on it, and can't live without it because those days are over. 
You are now stepping into a new paradigm where there's a new understanding of how to relate to your environment and the people around you. So you don't need alcohol anymore to take care of that information for you because you are gonna be receiving information from a different way that includes more light and more love in your communication towards others and how you hear people. So it'll take care of the heaviness and the heavy heart that causes you to drink. And it also will take care of the need for distraction because you are focused on your ascension. So you do not need alcohol to give you any information here. Bless the journey with the alcohol. And if you need to, you can have a couple drinks here or there once in a while. Make sure you flush carefully before and after with lots of water and green juice. So my recommendation is to totally eliminate alcohol from your diet. It is very difficult for the body. Body has a hard time breaking down the fermentation and to your body, it thinks it's actually under duress because it thinks that you just poisoned it. So it has to send an alarm system to go and heal the body because your body thinks it's actually dying. So every time you drink, just know your body thinks you're actually killing yourself. So it's rushing to the, to the rescue. If you have been drinking also a long time, make sure you replenish your kidneys and your liver with supplements like milk thistle and B12 are excellent supplements, but do your research and see what's best for you. Green juices. I recommend you getting a juicer and I recommend you drinking green juices with kale, lettuce, and romaine and putting it with lemon and apple and try to have at least two to three glasses a week to start and some people are up to three glasses a day. What this will do is cool your system down, alkaline your system, and you will be much calmer. Your blood will have enough oxygen to move toxins through your body, and you will start cleansing your system, including your digestion, and overall lowering your temperature index. So you will feel calmer and more relaxed, and you can think clearer because you'll have oxygenation going into your bloodstream, including your brain. So you will feel overall better Plus you'll look great and your skin will be fresh. If you're drinking sodas, cut back on that. Consuming sugar also will create a difficult scenario for your body to assimilate and process. And you will also start gaining weight because it turns it into fat. Sugar gets turned and stored into fat. Just think about that. Also, sugar is acidic, so it lands into your joints. And once it's in your joints, you get achy joints. So you will have a hard time getting out of the couch or the bed and you're gonna feel uncomfortable and achy and that's because there's too much sugar in your diet. Try to stay away from white foods if you can. I'm not saying I'm an expert in this area. I still have white foods here and there, but white foods includes dairy, cheese, ice cream, bread, rice, pasta. I'm not saying eliminate. I am saying try to cut back on it. If you can eliminate it, fantastic, good for you. I have done that before and I felt even a thousand times better. It's just the starchy content and the way the wheat binds together in a gluten formula creates a binding effect in the digestion and you will slow your system down creating a backup and in that backup you'll create heat and in that heat you'll start sending the cycle to your system that you're under duress which creates stress and also you get a foggy disposition and you get brain fog. If you have too much, once in a while is fine. Dairy itself, I have eliminated dairy out of my diet for the last 25 years. Dairy has a ton of mucus in it if it's coming from cow's milk. There's people who think raw milk is good for you, raw cow's milk, and I will not go into that debate. But I will just say for me, having no dairy in my diet is really important. And the same holds true for ice cream and rice. Too much is not good. So moderation always for these things. Okay, so in your diet, you're gonna be cutting back on certain things, eliminating certain things. And as we go into the proteins, just keep in mind everybody's different. Every blood type is different and requires different things. And also depending on your exercise and workout routine and your actual physical exertion, that also will play a role here. So you have to check in with yourself to see if this is appropriate. My recommendation based on my experience with my body and the people around me, I have noticed that during an ascension process, especially it is wise to cut back on red meat. So red meat 
is really hard to digest and creates a ton of heat and you can get migraines from that back up in the digestion, hard to digest and overall fatigue. And you also can have achy joints from that. So once in a while, like I said, is okay. I have eliminated red meat from my diet totally and I feel so much better. Once in a while, every few months, if I get a craving, I'll have a hamburger, but I don't have another one for months or six months at a time because I can really feel the difference. I do eat chicken and I do eat fish and I really enjoy that. I like my steamed vegetables, my raw vegetables, my cooked vegetables. I love to have a majority of vegetables in my diet and less animal protein, more vegetarian, less animal protein. My goal personally, since last year, 2019, as we went into the fall, I started to sense an upgrade in my own system. And I knew immediately what that meant because I've been through this so many times. That means you're gonna have to eliminate pro animal protein. I have, and then all that's left now is just chicken and in small moderation. And I only have it broiled or it's baked, but it's definitely not heavy to digest. And I don't eat large portions of it. My portion sizes are small. And whenever you'll go through an ascension process, you'll know right away that you're being successful. If you start losing pounds, you'll start noticing your body getting smaller because you'll notice that you're not intaking so much inflammatory foods and drinks and you're gonna feel overall better. So this is just the diet itself. And of course I can go into great detail. There's nutritionists and people who are very strict with their diet that can give their own advice. Leave your comments below if you have any suggestions or any tips on the best way to get through your ascension process because it can help somebody else. So once you have the diet understood, you have to lighten up the diet. I recommend start there, start with liquid intake and then your solid foods. And this is extremely important, flushing, flushing. I also recommend at some point, not in the heat of things, you have to wait till your system cools down, you can go into a detox. And there's many beautiful detoxes out there. I'm sure people can list a hundred detoxes that are available. I personally like hot lemon water. I just fill up a hot lemon, uh, a hot water with squeezed lemon in it with nothing else because I can't ingest anything that's heat inducing because I am always working on making sure inflammation is down, blood pressure is down. I'm always bringing everything down because I run really hot. And also with my sign being a Taurus with a Leo rising, I get very spicy so I can really burn a lot of fuel and I get very burned up. So I have to make sure I stay cool, calm and collected at all times. So this is gonna help you tremendously with migraines, dehydration, it's gonna help you with skin problems, it's gonna help you with brain fog, you're gonna feel better overall, and this is gonna aid and help your ascension process. Because as you start to do that, you'll start to honor yourself in a new way, you start to rise, stand different, walk different, you'll feel different, you know that you're on a program, you know that you're on a path, and this is a path that all humans go through and all star seeds go through that are going through the ascension process. There are many ascensions that you will have in your existence. Your first ascension is the biggest one and it tapers off from there. I still have ascensions, I call it upgrades and they're not as dramatic because I understand when they come in, how long they last and what to do. And so I am pretty good at it and I know how to handle it and it always feels the same. An ascension means a stage of evolution. You're taking an evolutionary leap in your consciousness. So when you do that, you're gonna start noticing a lot of changes in your life. It starts with you and it emanates out. I think I've actually turned into a mermaid now because of how much water I drink. Next, we're gonna go into your environment. The environment is very, very important. As you know, you may or may not have realized how important, but I will tell you it is everything. So your personal space where you sleep and where you get ready and cleanse and do all of your rituals for yourself needs to be uncluttered and simple. So even if it's just for the ascension process, you need to do this. Even if it's beautiful, even if you love what you have around you, you have to declutter and simplify because you need energetic space. It's very important for you to have room to breathe. So you have to be able to look at a blank wall. You have to look at blank floor. You can't have a lot of mix matching colors and textures and fabrics and things piled up. You have to have things simplified. So you can feel good when you walk in and you take that big cleansing breath. 
your home, you're in your room and you feel great. That is super important. When you lay down at night, you need to feel good in your bed. So your bed is your number one thing. You have to like the sheets, you have to like the pillowcases. If you can't afford to do a whole new bed system, then go and just get whatever you can that you can get on discount that as long as it's pretty, feels good on you and you like the way it looks when you walk in the room, just make sure that you feel good when you lay down. A part of your ascension process is understanding your value. So you're gonna be representing yourself to yourself. So when you lay down, you're asking yourself, is this appropriate for me? Do I like the way I am laying down? If you've never noticed before and you just crash out, this is one of the things you're gonna to have to learn is how to take care of yourself from morning to night in the sleep world and in the waking world. So while you're laying down, you still have to pay attention to how you are laying, what type of pillows you're using. My recommendation is I use pillows that you can form and create into whatever form you want. And so I can push it up against my neck and I can get comfortable into where I can cradle my head so my head is not tilted in a weird way and pinching nerves and having breathing problems while I sleep. So that's also important that you feel comforted and ready to go for the night because you're gonna launch for about eight hours to go into different dimensions and you might as well be comfortable in your pod. Okay, so now you're working on your bedroom and you're making sure it represents you. It's your holy ground. It's where you come to comfort yourself during the night. It's where you come to comfort yourself throughout your subconscious time when you're sleeping. So it's extremely important. Try to have as many crystals around you as you can when you sleep to block you from EMFs. I sleep with crystals underneath my head and I will put a link below of a, of a woman I know that makes special pouches with specialized crystals that are just for EMF blocking and it's for your pillows or for near your sleeping area. So I use that and I love it and it really helps you sleep really calmly. Okay, so once you have your bedroom set up and you have your crystals around you, now you're gonna look for ambiance. And so that means you're gonna have to bring out your candles, you have to get your handy sage out, and you're going to start taking the time to cleanse your environment, not just from deep cleaning, not just from decluttering, but also energetically. So I know this sounds like a lot, but it's totally worth it. You would do it in a baby nursery. You would do it for your child. You have to do this for yourself. Once your room is clean, you open your windows, you have your light coming in, your room feels clean and organized, you feel like you can breathe, then you can start cleansing with sage and candles, essential oils, humidifiers, oil diffusers, and every type of air cleansing machine or gadget or something more traditional. You can also just be creative in how you would like to express yourself in the air. So your air is gonna become important to you. So everything is getting important to you. Do you start to see this? Your consciousness is starting to go into the smallest details. So you're starting to pay attention to things you took for granted or ignored, and it's gonna make a difference later. So this is your sleeping area, then bathroom area. You're gonna go in there and you're gonna also cleanse, deep cleanse, and try your best to keep it clean. And water is super important, so you're gonna be taking lots of showers and baths. And when you go in there, know that you are cleansing your system. You are not just trying to get clean for the sake of getting clean. You're actually going in to clean your aura. You're cleaning off energetic things that are coming off of you. You're releasing things. Your whole body and your whole system surrenders. And it's super important for you to experience the cleansing, beauty, and the magic that water brings. So you have to enjoy the luxuriousness of the shower. So if you've never done that before and you need encouragement, go to CVS and get your special loofahs and soaps and body cleanses and whatever you need to do to feel luxurious. And this is for men too. This is not just for women. Men need to experience this so you really understand how to nurture and honor the body. Like I said, you would do this for your child. So please consider to do this to you. You are nurturing yourself. So that's the big theme here is everyone needs to learn that this is about nurturing the body, nurturing yourself. And what happens is as you start to work on your exterior, you're gonna start noticing how your internal mental states start to change and you're gonna feel so good because you're gonna start realizing that you're okay, you're taking care of yourself and it, nobody else has to do this for you and it's good for you, you need to learn how to do this. I don't care if you live with other people or you have a bunch of kids or whatever your situation is, you have to fight for yourself because it is your life and ascension is about awakening. So that means you're awakening to your value and what's important to you and what is important to your future and your world. 
and you don't realize how you're going to affect others. So when when your children and your friends and your roommates start to see how you take care of yourself and you take care of your room and you take care of your environment, it encourages them. And this is a time when we're all here to encourage each other and we want to help each other. So it's super important that you are paying attention to the smallest little details. Okay. You can do this with your car, you can do this with your garden, you can do this with your closet. This is awesome. I love cleansing my closet. It's the closet purge, right? It's great. Every so many months, I take all the stuff out that I'm not gonna ever wear again, I don't like, it doesn't suit me, I have evolved past, or it's definitely like not doing anything for me. So get rid of it, get rid of the shoes, everything. Make sure your closet is simple. The point of this is this. You see what's happening when you turn on the media? Do you see what's happening when you go outside? Okay, so it's massive, right? There's lots of things going on. When you're home, your home should not be reflecting what's happening outside. That's the purpose of a home. Your home is your space, your cleansing space, your quiet space, your space that you can have time to reflect and to let go and to detox. This is your cleansing pod. Before I ever had any ascensions at all, I was one of those people that would get in the hot tub, drink a beer, have a great time, laugh really loud, music was loud, everything was loud, friends were loud, people coming and going, kids are screaming, laundry's going, food is cooking. Yeah, that's great once in a while, but when you do it 365 days a year, it burns you out big time. And you're gonna start to feel your sensory overload, nervous system overload, and then that tension brings anxiety because either you have to keep up this really high high and if you can't then you get mad or you go to addictions you go to substances to keep up the high and if you can't then you're going to blame somebody somebody near you somebody outside your home somebody's going to get blamed that you don't feel good and so this is how i used to be also and this is normal and a lot of people go through this so don't feel bad if you're one of those people it's just right now you're going to be switching gears you're going into a new lane. So you're coming out of one lane of traffic, you're gonna go into a different freeway. You're totally switching gears and going somewhere else. Now during this process of cleansing and rituals, you're also gonna notice that your speaking is gonna change a little bit because you're gonna want different things and you're gonna feel different about things and different about people. And as you try to relate to people and talk to people, at first it's gonna be really crazy because you're not gonna like the way they talk or how you're talking and it's gonna feel uncomfortable and you're gonna notice that's never bothered you before, but it bothers you now. And so that's all that counts because what's happening is your whole entire DNA, your entire cellular system is getting new information and you are also upgrading your system. So your dialogue is gonna change and the things you wanna see and watch and listen to is gonna change because you're changing. So guess what happens when you change? Not everybody wants to change with you, right? And it's totally fine. It's not their ascension process or they're not in it or it's not the stage you're in and that's okay. Not everybody has to be totally where you're at all the time 24 seven. It's totally fine for somebody to not get what you're doing. Now here's the thing. It gets really tricky here because some people actually get super triggered and really mad that you're no longer acting the same way. So that can be really hard because you're gonna start losing friends and family that you have held in high esteem and very dear to you and your heart will be broken and you'll think something is very, very wrong. It's not. As souls, we all come together and share and exchange information for a time. Some are lifetimes and some are for a short temporary period of time. You'll have groups and you'll have different kind of evolutionary patterns. So does your friends, they change and your families, they change. And so there's always changes. You're gonna notice in your immediate family that the people in your life that you have to live with every day, they're gonna have a little bit of a different time experiencing ascension with you. First of all, you don't really probably know what's happening to you unless you've been through an ascension process before. So you're gonna be a little bit upset and short-tempered because you're gonna tell everybody how to change and what to do different so it can modify and be more pleasant for you because you're going through such a sensitive time period as you are having a big awakening. So your family and friends at home, whoever you live with may or may not wanna go along with that program and they may not wanna help you or be a part of it and that's okay. 
it truly is okay. They don't have to be a part of it. I know it's hard to believe because you think that your friends and family are your tightest knit group and they have to go through it with you. But actually you have to realize that we're all individual souls and individual spirits. And we all come from different places with different backgrounds and paths. And we all have different things to learn. Now, some people might be triggered by you, but you met, so, some people might be triggered by you, but you have no idea that you're probably sparking them and you're also helping them to ignite and them to come to life. It may not happen in front of you though. They may have to leave you and go out in the world, but eventually it will happen. So you may be the first person to help spark them and then they will start to get the picture on their own. So don't feel bad if they don't get it in front of you. Don't feel bad if they slam the door in your face. Don't feel bad that right in the most delicate time of your life when you feel like a little wet fish thrown onto the boat flopping around, don't feel bad when people are mad at you for that. It's okay. They don't know what you're going through and they don't understand it. So it's up to you to take care of yourself. And that's what this whole video is about. That's what the whole process is about, is how to take care of yourself. Okay, there's more. Breathing. <sighs> Let's talk about breathing. So breathing lets you know you're alive. Basic fundamental life 101, right? Okay, so what happens when you hold your breath? Not good for you, not good for any part of your body. Your body doesn't get oxygen and that's not okay. So you have to breathe. Now the thing about it is when you're going through tough times or a hard life, before or after or during an ascension, you'll notice your breath is gonna change. When I go through an ascension process, I'm always taking these big cleansing breaths. So I go like this. So I'll be talking to somebody or I'll hang out and I'll just go, <sighs> like I need to take these big breaths. My lungs need to fill up and I can't help it, I have to. And so you would think something's wrong, but actually what's happening is you're finally taking first big breaths. You may have never taken breaths before. Most people operate right here. They're breathing out of their lungs from here, short little cat breaths like this. And so they really actually are not getting full. You're not getting, so actually you're not getting full lungfuls of oxygen. And what does the body need to function properly is oxygen. And where are you gonna feel the most relaxed is when you're breathing. And if you can see what's going on in the world right now, it's all about breath, lungs, breathing, can't breathe. It's hard to breathe with a mask on my face. It's hard to breathe when I have COVID. It's hard to breathe with all these this violence and aggression. It's hard to be me. It's hard to breathe. So anytime you don't feel safe, anytime you don't feel like you can be yourself, you have a hard time breathing, right? That's okay. That's a stage. You'll eventually learn that you can breathe underwater like me. We're mermaids, okay? Mermen and merladies. We can breathe underwater. And what that means is that it doesn't matter what is happening in the room, you're allowed to breathe. It doesn't matter how tense it is. It doesn't matter how loud it is. It doesn't matter what is happening. Your breath is your own. You are allowed to breathe and you're allowed to take it in. If you need help breathing, like most people do, especially when I first started breathing, I couldn't believe how much I forgot how to breathe normally. So I had to actually go on YouTube and learn how to breathe again. And the best part about that is you're gonna find tons and tons of breathwork teachers that will show you how to do great big cleansing breaths and big huge releases. And there's many different styles. You can cleanse your bloodstream. You can have transcendental meditative experiences. So you can really enjoy having wonderful cleansing good breath inside of you. So be happy for yourself. Next. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about how you receive information and how you speak. This gets a little bit more tricky, right? Because you can't really control what other people say around you and you can't really tell them what to do. So it's really important for you to navigate and learn how to listen and be a part of conversations and give your two cents or your opinion or your healing advice when you feel good. Okay, if you have to repeat that, rewind what I just said and do that. So you have to feel good before you speak. Nobody teaches you this, okay? I learned this the hard way. It took me years to understand this principle. So I had my breath down, which was great, but I could not figure out how to feel good in conversations. 
Does anybody else have that issue or can relate to me? You just don't feel good. Something's wrong. Something's off. You don't like the conversation. You don't like how it feels. You don't like where it's going. You don't like how you feel like you're not in control. And how you don't feel good. You feel bad and you don't know why. And that's because you haven't checked in with the gods and goddesses. That means yourself because you're a god and you're a goddess. You haven't checked in with yourself to see if you're okay in the conversation first and foremost. So before you even begin the conversation, do you feel good? Do you feel good in your body? Do you feel good in your heart? Do you feel good in the conversation? Do you feel good about the topic? Do you feel good with the person you're talking to? How good do you feel? Do you want more? How much more? If you really want more, you can stay in and have a great time and you can enjoy the conversation. But if you don't like what you're doing and you don't enjoy the conversation, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna suffer. Nobody ever teaches you to stop when you start suffering and walk away or change a conversation or turn the TV off or turn the radio off. So like these robots, we just think we're supposed to stay in it. So we stand there and take it. We stand there and listen. We take it in. We listen to the news. We listen to this, whatever, whatever it is. And there's nothing wrong with the news. You can listen to whatever you want. It's if you can handle it, if you can hear it. Now, when you're going through the ascension process, you not, might not be able to handle as much as you did before when you just didn't care or you didn't know how it was affecting your body. So, so now when you are going through the ascension process, you're gonna be very aware of how you're receiving information. So if somebody's yelling at you or talking mean to you, all you do is know that it's not for you. If somebody is talking mean to you, no, it is not for you. They may intend it for you. You do not need to receive it, okay? This goes to every single relationship dynamic. If you wanna play in that arena and have a tit for tat and back and forth and get all riled up, go for it. But after 25 years of it, you'll burn your system out. And if you're going through an ascension process, you're definitely not going to want to do that because it hurts. It'll hurt you. Why? Because you're becoming more sensitive and your sensitivity is so apparent and raw and you feel very vulnerable. That's why you're going to cry a lot during the ascension process. If those of you who are going through it know what I'm talking about. So when you are in a conversation that's uncomfortable, you can let the person know that you're uncomfortable and walk away and say, I'll come back later or you go into your breathing and be calm and realize that this is not for you and this is for the other person until you're ready to have a discussion about it. And if it's not for you at all and never will be, then just bless the person and they'll be on their merry way because they don't have anybody to play with. If you're not engaging with them, they're not going to continue. I mean, you can only yell at somebody so long, right? Because eventually if you walk away and shut the door, then there's nobody to talk to right? If you're in any kind of heavy, serious, violent, or aggression in your family, you need to call the hotlines for domestic support, domestic violence support. If there is violence or you're afraid for your life and you can go into a shelter. I've had to do similar things. So it's a big decision to make and um, my story is very long and I won't go into it, but I just will say that there's a way out. If you're strong enough to stay, you're strong enough to leave. So don't ever be a victim and blame the other person and just stay in it because that is not how it works. You can actually get out and you have every right and you are a human being and you have value. And so you can take your stuff and go and you can learn to live on your own and do it without violence. And that's another topic and another conversation. <laughs> But for now, we're gonna stick with your environment and that includes your inner environment. So how you hear things, how you listen, how you receive. So that includes volume. I know that sounds really crazy, but let's go into it, okay? So when you have really high anxiety and you yell a lot, guess who's getting hurt? Not the other people, you're getting hurt. You're the one that has to calm down from it you're the one getting a headache from it, you're the one getting dehydrated from it, and you're the one that's getting high blood pressure and stress and anxiety and panic attacks. So guess what, it's not them. Now those of you who do inner yelling, they yell at themselves or other people internally and silently, you're gonna have the same effects and you're gonna have the same exact punishment and you'll end up getting hurt as well. So the ascension is about learning self-respect. 
So I have been in my Ascension journey for 10 straight years and I have had many, many levels leveling up. So like you just keep going up the ladder of your Ascension and I notice that I become more and more sensitive. I want softer things. I want nicer things. I want prettier things. I'm more gentle with myself. I'm calmer. I like to be around people who are gentle and sweet and loving and calm. And that is my favorite kind of people because that is essentially who I am. But you know, I've come from the school of hard knocks, just like you guys. And so I had a lot of battle scars and I became really intense and rebellious and I became you know, angry and all these things for many years before my ascension. So by the time I was going through it, I was a far away, I was far off from where I am today. So I didn't start off being able to be gentle and soft and sweet. It took me a very long time to learn how to do that. So imagine you take a warrior, a very strong warrior, and you take the weapons out of his hands and you put dandelions and you give him sweet drinks and you tell the warrior to sit down and it's time to play nice. So maybe the warrior will not do this at first, but eventually maybe you'll coax the warrior to start doing this. Now, when this starts to happen, eventually the warrior, if they surrender completely, the, the warrior over time will turn into a saint right? A warrior will turn into a higher vibrational being, which is very lovely and healing and sweet and soft. And people think they're very saint-like and very friend in that way, because they're very gentle. And I'm not saying it in a religious tone, and I'm not saying it to worship somebody. I'm just saying it just feels good. So imagine you got this warrior and now this warrior is a saint. Now guess what happens? That saint is also still a warrior. So that makes a very interesting combination, don't you think? Because then that person is really powerful with lots of life experience, but under control and calm and peaceful and not angry. So you can bring a lot of wisdom to the table and you don't have to be triggered. So you can take care of people and you can have a good time and you don't have to worry about getting triggered and you have to get mad at people and yell at people. And it's a stage. So I went through many, many stages and even in my ascension, let's say even halfway through my ascension, I was still yelling at people. I was still yelling at my kids. I was still yelling and trying to get everybody's attention and trying to get my client's attention and trying this and trying that. And I was still trying so hard to make everything work. And it was so difficult until I had more ascensions. Eventually you're gonna have enough ascensions where you're gonna to start to calm down, cool down altogether. You're not gonna worry about anger and you're not gonna worry about triggers and you're just gonna be relaxed. And that is the goal, right? Now you have to go step by step because your life is complex and you came from a very complex life. So then you're gonna to have to go into more of your complexity. So it takes time for you to unravel all the things that you've created. So you have to understand yourself. You have to understand the people around you. You have to learn to be calm and relax and you have to learn to take on less and give out more. Take on less, give out more. And that is the biggest formula I learned and it's the best one because the more- So during this time, things are going to feel chaotic. And you're going to wonder what is happening to your life. It's going to feel upside down. It's going to feel totally foreign. And you're going to start seeking out different kinds of videos and books and Facebook groups. And you may have come across this video through that exploration, or maybe you have found me on my Facebook group page. And this was, this video was designed so that you can actually feel comforted by your ascension process and not to be scared of it. And this is also here to show you that this is a larger picture and it's a process and it's step by step and it's gonna take time. So go easy on yourself. Since you're learning how to take care of yourself during this time, you're also gonna be asking yourself a lot of questions about how come nobody else took care of me and how come my parents didn't do it right? How come my spouse didn't do it right? And then you're going to start beating up on yourself again and we're back to square one. So it's super important that you really pay attention to how you're treating yourself and you have to really pay attention to the way you're talking. So when you start hearing negative conversations going on inside your head and you start hearing bad comments that you're making to yourself, catch it. If you start to feel emotional during this time, it's normal also. So set aside time where you can cry. You're gonna to need to release and let out a lot of this pain 
and suffering and things that you have been through over the years before your ascension process began. So you will want to cry in the shower. You'll want to cry while you're watching movies. You'll want to cry. It's something somebody said to you that was lovely or sweet or something that you didn't like seeing, like maybe you didn't like watching some news casts or something happened that you didn't like participating in and you'll cry and you're gonna cry easier than ever before. It is a stage and by the way, this stage lasts a long time, but you come in and out of it in, in, in gradual stages. So like you'll have big crying bursts that can last for months at a time, but then you're totally fine for like a year and a half. And then you can go through the cycle again. So I currently am right now in a crying stage. <laughs> I'm like crying every single day. And I have to literally, my poor eyes, oh my God. I have to really take care of my face because I'm crying so much. Um, but it's just because I'm grateful and I'm just really processing a lot of things that are coming into my life that I'm so, so happy about including this group and the people I've met through this group. I'm experiencing things within myself that I've always wanted to experience. I'm finally getting more of the cotton candy. I'm getting more of the sweet stuff. So I'm enjoying my life so much more now than ever before that that makes me cry because I'm finally getting the feeling I've always wanted. And I cannot tell you how good that feels. So that makes me cry because I'm so grateful for it. And that's good. You want to be grateful for the things in your life. And you all also, you know, some of your cries could be productive cries. They're angry cries, hurtful cries, and they're productive. You go deep in and you're like scrubbing the bottom of the tub. You got to get that gunk out. So make sure you stay with your your cycles. So make sure your water intake and your food intake and your environment is proper and that you're listening to the right things and you're breathing properly. And you're going to start to notice that these crying cycles will come and go and they're going to be more and more meaningful. And you're going to notice you understand why you're crying and you're going to know where it's coming from and you're going to know what you're, what you're birthing into. So you're going to start recognizing your ascension steps and you're going to feel better about your rebirth. You're going to feel better about your awakening. It's going to start to dawn on you that this is a new beginning and you are having a new life that's happening right in front of you. As far as your long-term effects go, you will definitely be experiencing some big monumental changes in your life. So that can include getting into a relationship or getting out of one, moving to another city, moving out of your home, changing your love life, changing your family dynamic. Many big massive changes could happen during this time and that is because you are ready and you're finally willing to take on a bigger conversation for yourself. So you are gonna start experiencing more fluctuation. So in the middle of your rebirth, you're gonna say, oh great, now my relationship's on the rocks. And actually what's happening is that it's moving. So it's like an earthquake, you know, and like it's shifting. So your life is starting to move and shift. Your energy is starting to flow and you're starting to make things happen and start to address things that need to be addressed attract things that you have been wanting your whole life and you're going to start to feel more abundant in your decision making so you're going to feel less scared and more confident in yourself because you're going to like the decisions you're making because you're going step by step honoring yourself doing the process that we talked about earlier and stepping into your new beginning your new self and as you're doing that, you realize that it's all been about you this whole time. It's not about anybody else. And you're going to start having more compassion for your fellow human, your fellow starseed, and you're going to feel more apt to lend a hand or take care of other people. Giving is the way out of everything that feels bad. Gratitude and giving. So when you give yourself and give away your arts, your skills, your goodies, the things that you make, or your love, or your healing abilities, or just your kind words, a little goes a long way because this world really, really needs a lot of that. So we are really experiencing this giant awakening and ascension on the entire planet. And each one of us are having their own individual experiences within it. And we're all activating each other. 
So it's not just one or two people ascending, it is multitudes of people ascending. And right now there's so many ascension videos out right now and people talking about this because everyone wants to help, especially those who have been healers for a long time and helping people go through the ascension process. It was kind of an odd thing before this whole lockdown and everything, you know, people were like, what's ascension? I don't get it. But now so many people are having it that literally it's like, what's your symptoms? Oh, my symptoms are this, what about you? So like so many people are talking about it on social media and in person, people are discussing their symptoms of what they're going through. Some of you are experiencing more extreme sensations. So you will be having heart palpitations, you'll be having really severe crying bursts that last for hours. Just know you're hitting a roadblock and you are just trying to burst through. So there's a block, it's an energy block, and you're trying to burst through this. It's kind of, it could, you could look at it like scar tissue, an energy block, it could be anything you could imagine it to be that bottlenecks. So your energy is trying to come through, root chakra, you're trying to come through like your kundalini energy, your energy is trying to rise through up into your crown chakra. And as you're doing that, as you're recreating yourself on this planet every day in a new way, you start, you're gonna start noticing that this is gonna become more prevalent. And you're gonna start wondering why you have so much pain and suffering if you're rebirthing. And that's because there's a major thing you need to address. For me, it I had pain and suffering from a lot of domestic violence. And also for me, it was a lot of not being taken care of properly or feeling uh, attended to or given the proper treatment. I felt really bad and I didn't know how to take care of myself. So when it was time for my ascension process, I was really having a hard time letting go of the pain and anger of this more traumatic experience that I had in my life. So some of you are gonna go through some deeper soul purging. Don't be afraid. It's a part of the process. You can get a friend, a healer, a shaman, a psychic, a spiritual teacher, somebody to lay hands on you, put crystal healing energy. And by the way, there's so many wonderful healers in the world that have amazing talents and abilities, have different modalities that they can help you with, including light therapy, where you have a laser light coming in and recalibrating you like AccuLight therapy. And I have a friend who does that. I can put his link below. And also there's people who do alignments and there's people who do so many things and you will start to feel better as you start doing more and more of these activities where you're healing yourself. Some of the pitfalls that I wanna make sure that you don't fall into is feeling sorry for yourself. Especially if your sign kind of uh, runs in this category to feel sorry for yourself. So I'm a Taurus and we're like big crybabies. So we really, really like go into it and we feel sorry for ourselves. But thankfully I've found a way to transmute that. And I now, instead of feeling sorry for myself, I take it as a sign that I am asking something from myself, that I need something more and I can give it to myself. So it's like a cycle. And if I can't give it to myself, somebody can show me how to do it. So there's always a way that you can get to where you wanna to get to. If you're watching this video and you have no ascension symptoms, but you're curious about it, that's great and I'm glad you're here. But if you're not feeling anything at all and you don't know what we're talking about, all I can say is this. It's probably because you haven't experienced it yet. When it happens, it happens big and strong and fast. Some people I know, and by the way, this has nothing to do with age. Some people I know have an ascension and while they're ascending, they know they're ascending while they're going through major symptoms. And all I have to do is give them some quick notes, like make sure you have crystals by your bed, make sure you have a cold towel on your head, make sure you lay without a shirt or lay on a hardwood floor or cold cement so your, your whole body can realign and all of your energy can start going back and forth, up and down your spine and calm your system down. And don't buy into the story that something's wrong because nothing is wrong, you're actually recalibrating. So keep this in mind when sometimes you start going into a frenzy and you start panicking and you feel like your life is over and it's the end of the world. Just know you're in the middle of a dark spot, one of those blocks, you're facing a very dark situation that was painful in your past and you're about ready to release it. 
don't give up on yourself. Know that it's gonna happen. I've had to go through so many of these and I never thought I was gonna get to the other side of it. Each time, for some reason, I never learned or got it through my head that, well, the stubborn Taurus probably, but I never got it through my head that once I get through one block, I'll probably get through the next one. But no, each time I act like it's never gonna happen. And <laughs> it's like a baby who, when you walk out of the room, like where'd they go? They're never coming back. That's how I was. So as soon as I start hitting another roadblock, I immediately start thinking, oh great, that's it. I'm just never gonna feel good again for the rest of my life, it's over. Super drama. So this uh, could happen to you and don't be surprised or alarmed if it does. There's nothing wrong and you're just actually learning about yourself like a baby who's learning about themselves. So you're learning about your symptoms, you're learning about yourself, you're learning about where you're from, you're learning about where you're going. So it's a big learning experience. You're having a huge learning experience. You're learning to take care of yourself. You're learning to breathe. You're learning to play nice with others. You're learning to play nice with yourself. You're learning to be kind. You're learning to look at things again. You're learning to come from your senses and be aware of your environment. You're learning to take in information in a better way. You're calming your system down. You're doing things that feel better and more holistic. You start to feel better about your environment. Your breath changes, your conversations change, your attitude changes, what you listen to changes, your mindset. You start being more creative. You start doing more things with your hands. You start playing piano again or drawing or hiking or all the things that you've been wanting to do. And your mind starts to clear out and you're gonna start to feel 100% better. And you're gonna love it, trust me. So if you are in the middle of a dark spot right now, just know you're okay. <laughs> You're not alone at all. And there's a lot of people going through this right now. I hope this video served you guys well. I could talk about this topic for literally hours. And I have been asked 14,000 questions on this topic. And I have answers for each one of those because not only have I gone through it, I've helped my children go through it. I've helped my clients go through it for the last 10 years. So you can imagine, I know a lot about the Ascension process. I know a lot about the awakening process and I know a lot about coming through to the other side and you will get there and so don't give up and just know that this is the most beautiful, the most bountiful, the most precious time in your life. You are the best you've ever been. You are an angel. You are light. You are love. Accept that. Receive that and if no one's telling you, I'm telling you and if that's not good enough, you start telling yourself. You stay kind to yourself read the proper books and, and watch the proper videos that help you feel better, meditative videos and things that calm your system. I love meditation videos that have water like river rocks and like waterfalls and that always feels good. And it's great to have water around running somewhere in your house so you can have like a little table fountain or some kind of water dripping because that feels so good and calming to the nervous system. So you need to always be feeding the nervous system, always be thinking about how can I make sure my nervous system stays calm. And so, you know, for me, like dolphin sounds and meditation and, and meditative music with dolphin sounds and all these things feel so, so good and soothing to my soul. And even now, when I still go through an ascension process and I get that burned out feeling and I start frying my circuits and I'm like, oh no, here we go. I immediately go to my go-to's, I have my go-to's. So I immediately know tons of water immediately. Two, do everything wonderful and nice to myself. Give myself a lot of presence. And three, my meditations have to be crucial. They are super important. So meditations, whether you are being guided or if you are just being silent with yourself, which is perfect. But at the end of this, what you're going to learn is that you can be still within yourself and you can love yourself wholesomely and you can love yourself the way you want to and it doesn't matter what your past looked like. It doesn't matter how bad you think you were, how dumb you think you are, how behind everybody you think you are or even how much better you think you are than everybody else. It doesn't matter these tension inducing conversations you have with yourself. The bottom line is your spirit, your angel self is looking after you and making sure that you're gonna get through this process safely. You're gonna get to the other side. 
that you are going to be given everything that you need to be a healthy human being on this planet. And you are not alone. You have your starseed friends and family with you. You have people with you that are interested in your growth. You find the right communities. If you don't have a community in person somewhere, you can find an online community. This is a great community, the United Starseed Connections Group, because we have weekly chats and we have discussion pods and we're very active in communicating with each other. We hold a very tight and precious space. So it's safe for starseeds who are newly ascending. We have so many things going on so much all the time. I hate to leave you guys, but this is my time to go. I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this video for yourself and taking the time to listen to it for me because it helps me to keep going when I know there's people that need these videos. I keep doing my best to make it as many as I can and help everybody in the ascension process as we globally ascend. And congratulations, by the way, you're at the right place at the right time with the right person. Namaste and much love.